Hey y'all, coming to you from the International Headquarters of Scotty DTV, but I was at the 2022 Good Guys Columbus event, and I came across this very sexy 1935 Ford Street Ride I think you're all going to like. Let me get the camera turned around, we'll take a quick look at it. Brother, what a cool car. What is it? Uh, 1935 Ford Roadster. You know, you have this ability to make these street rides look like sexy women. I mean, you have a class about them. I'm not talking about the trashy stuff of the 2022. I'm talking about them 50, 60 girls, you know, the ones that showed yeah. up with style. Yeah. We've had a lot of practice with them 35 Ford, so, you know, uh, I try to make them, you know, long, low, and smooth, you know. What do you do to do that? Uh... Well, that one's on a, a custom-built chassis that's uh, the wheelbase is extended four inches. And so, you know, we stretched the cabin out, um, made a lot more room in there, you know, for a, a normal-sized person. And uh, this wedge section, the body, an inch and a half in the front to zero in the back. And, uh, you know, we hand-built the doors, deck lid, hood, hood sides, windshield frame. He's the top of a 35 grill and the bottom of a 34 grill original customer wanted that uh, peak grill on the bottom, you know, and then we brought the fenders down to kind of mimic a 34, you know, fender, but they are 35 fenders. So really, you start with your own design. I mean, how much of the car is actually the way it was in 35? Uh... Not a lot, <laughs> you know. Uh, and, I, and I'm not, I, you know, I mean, people get yeah. tied up about years and this, that, and the other yeah. thing. I don't care. All I want to know is what the end result is. You can yeah. call this thing a 2022 for all I care. You know, yeah. it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. But also, I think it's noted there's a ton of work to make it look this way in that it sounds like you start over. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a pretty nasty car to begin with, and I knew it was tough you know we, we got it in a the guy had a collection of 36 stuff in his barn and uh that originally was a 36 to start with which you know the bodies are basically the same but when we took it off the bot or off the frame you know that the frame was laid over like two inches right on the cowl on the passenger side and the cowl had just been tarred and feathered and we we ended up building a complete new cowl the only piece we used off the original cowl is the piece right up where it has the body line going across right below the windshield. So basically the whole cowl is made too, you know. And, and the doors are so small on them, you know, and a bigger guy can't get in and out. So, you know, we lengthened those things. Uh, I think it was six inches and uh, overstock and, you know, moved the well back and just trying to open it up in there. So, you know, you got a lot of room. That is insane. Yeah. How much longer is this car than a stock one? Just six inches, the, or is it? Yeah, different? the the wheelbase is. It, you know, with that grill being peaked out in the front, it's probably maybe about eight nine inches longer than from you know from rear to front. Um, the wheelbase is only four, but I know that you know that that it kicks out there in the front. That sticks out a little bit further than normal. So. Yeah, man, just gorgeous. What about the colors you chose? Well, I I actually seen that color on a Jeep. I think I was at Louisville that year and. Uh, I seen it out there at night, and it was kind of under street light. You know, I, well, I'm going to check it out in the morning. I, I liked it a little bit better then. Uh, did a spray out of it, and uh, I, I didn't really care for it inside, but I really liked it outside. But after I did the car, you know, I, I kind of liked it both ways. So, but it's off a, off a Jeep. I've also seen it on, a, like, a Dodge Ram, and I think i seen it on a, a Challenger, too. Mm -hmm. It's just I didn't modify it at all. It's straight out of the... Out of the well, my my question is more than that. Up until I walked into this building Friday morning, my statement was green and red go together only on one day a year, and that's Christmas. Yeah. And I strolled up to this and absolutely fell in love and said, you know, I'm I'm I stand to be corrected. It it, it is possible to make green and red to go together, but yeah. it has to be the exact right shades. I seen that that color combo on a Bugatti off the internet, you know, and that's kind of where that I want, you know, I like to try to try to do different things. You know, I, I, you know, you can only see so much of one thing and I, I always try something different. And, uh, everybody thought I was crazy when I told them, you know, that was what I was going to use, but 
I thought it turned out pretty cool, you know. Absolutely did. I mean, it it has just enough unique flavor to it, but it it's not bitter. It's not you know something yeah. that that makes you go. Uh, um, no, but again, yeah. I think in order to pull it off, to, to you have to use the exact correct shades of those colors, and, and I think you did. I think you have to. I, 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 there is nothing on this car I would change, and I think that you know. I mean, I'm not a 35 Ford specialist, but when I think you walk up to it, I don't think that most people, especially, are going to look at this car and say it's this heavily modified to the point of where. Now somebody that's six foot six like yourself can get in and drive it. Yeah. And, and, yep. and it, but it doesn't look like you've blown it up. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't. Yeah. It's not obvious anywhere. Man, just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, it just you know we we touched every part of it, and you know we built rockers on the, or the stock ones just have the door meet the running board. You know, we built a full rocker on there for strength and. You know, try stiffen up everything because the roadsters are so flimsy to begin with, and uh, you know it just it, it it took a lot of a lot of hours, a lot of hours. I would imagine. <laughs> I would absolutely imagine. What about the interior? Interior was uh, done by uh, Recovery Room in Plasma, Nebraska. Um, we used Dodge Intrepid seats like I always do, and then uh, it's got a Corvette shifter and uh, Dakota digital gauges. You know, and uh, it's got an electric power steering unit on it too. I just tried to want to clean up the motor compartment. You know, the only thing I got hanging in there is the alternator on the front. Uh, and you know, part of redoing that cowl was, you know, we turned the intake around backwards. So the vents on the side of the hood actually pull air in. Air goes into the cowl through a couple flat filters and then into an air box. And then the, the throttle body's actually, you know, inside the car in a box. You know, what power is it? Uh, it's an LS3 and a 4L60E, a GM crate motor. What a just absolutely gorgeous car. Anything that I'm missing or anything, other details about it you need to say? Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of people like the lights and stuff. Uh, the headlights, I, I seen them at a Kawasaki shop. They're out of a Kawasaki Vulcan, and I like the way they had the point on the bottom to tie in, to, you know, tie in with the grill. So I ordered a set of those headlights, just the lenses, and then we, we built the buckets and then had uh, TJ Atomic Machine uh, work with the program and getting the the headlight rings we we 3d printed them fitted them and then we had spray metal and then comb plated on those and then the rear lights are off a polaris victory motorcycle but i've used them a couple of times in the past you know on other things does, does it have a roof know, what's that does it have a top no it does not uh it was intentionally planned and uh to have one actually had the metal to do it and uh then the owner Joe said I, he didn't need a top, so uh, I was happy with that. <laughs> I bet. Well, brother, if people want to keep in touch with you, there's not a way to really follow you, is there? You just have a website? Yeah, that's pretty much it. You don't even do Facebook I, or Instagram or anything. Yeah, no, I, you know, I got a flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I like to work in the shop, and uh, that's basically, uh, you know, that's what I do. So I got you. Well, at least give people a shout out. Tell them the name of your shop and where you're located. Yeah, yeah. we're at Lakeside Rods in uh, Rockwell City, Iowa. Well, I, I don't know. You know, I, I just advanced plating. Did the plating on it? You know, I had help with the body work from uh, Tyler and Boner and them guys from uh, Revision Rods. We kind of work back and forth with each other. I'm getting to the point where I don't really like to do the body work anymore and so uh i try to find you know good people to do it so but, uh, that's about it you know right on so you do you do all the fabricating all the assembly all the design all those kind of things yeah yeah no. me and bobby hopbar works for me he's been here like 15 years you know and uh we just you know we tear in them and do them up you know right getting old socks brother i hear you absolutely yep. and uh you know whatever it takes to keep going another day because again i think you just you have a, a niche you can do dodge trucks unlike anybody else and um anytime you roll Nobody street else did them. <laughs> well i didn't say there was a lot of competition but you know uh give credit where it's due you can make a ugly truck very very cool and man these street rides anytime you got one of those coming out i sure want to see it yeah well thanks 
So there you go from the 2022 Good Guys Columbus event. And a very cool 1935 Ford Street Rod from Lakeside Rods and Rides. Hope you all have enjoyed it. See ya! Hey y'all, make sure you subscribe to this channel and visit scottydtv.com for an easy way to search the hundreds of videos I have posted. Either click the link in the description or the one at the end of this video. Thank <laughs> you.